Hit the roads wherever they go, winding through Australia. With my camera in my hand, I am the Overlander. From Cairns, I head up the coast to Port Douglas, which I will use as a base from which to explore Cape Tribulation. Cape Tribulation has a bit of a last frontier feel about it. You can catch a ferry to get there, and it seems once you set foot on the other side, you're in a different world. Cape Trib is surrounded by the Daintree National Park, a World Heritage Area. And if you want to have the full jungle experience and have miles of beautiful deserted beaches to yourself, this is the place to visit. But before you decide you want to pack up and live here, consider this. Cape Tribulation has no grid power, no garbage collection, and the nearest ambulance is two hours south. And then there's the weather. The yearly rainfall is four and a half metres, and during the wet season, you can expect constant rainfall for up to four months. Oh, and did I mention the cyclones and the unbearable humidity? Two people who have made Cape Trib their home are Alison and Digby Gotts. They run an exotic fruit farm and explain to me why they live where they do. We came here on holidays and saw it was a beautiful place and we loved the rainforest and the reef and the beach, the great long empty beaches. And the climate meant we could grow tropical fruit here and we were looking for somewhere to have a farm and the remoteness of this area really appealed to us. Growing things has always been a major part of our life and then coming here it was growing things to earn our, to earn our income, uh, to earn enough money so we could really live off the land. So we just got this real buzz out of finding these unusual fruits on friends places and other markets, bring them back here or bring the seeds back here, grow them up, plant them out, um, getting all these amazing fruits that were pretty strange and new for us and then sort of being able to introduce them to other tourists passing through the area and coming in. And I think there's upwards of a hundred different fruits on the farm these days and there's always 10 or 15 fruits in season so we just sort of wander around, find what we've got give people a bit of a taste of some of the unusual fruits. We have our house completely open and so therefore we have a lot of the wildlife coming through. Um, the odd snake, there's lots of geckos, the rats come through, the rainforest rats come through. We've got green tree frogs living in the house. Every time I open the behind the door there's a green tree frog and there's three in the toilet at the moment and three in the bathroom. People, they come here and they say, oh, are you self-sufficient? And we laugh and say, well, if you only wanted to eat fruit, yes, but we like to drive cars too and we need petrol. But it is a real challenge to be able to grow and have all your own vegetables and have a full range of fruit all year round. And it is a dream that people have to live in the tropics That's and really be able to go out and find your own food. <laughs> We're chasing our own dream. It's, it's, it's our dream, it's what we want to do, and you make up your decisions on a daily basis according to your needs and priorities that you establish and that we see as important for that particular period. So we're not earning a whole lot of money, but we're earning enough to get by and we're doing it for ourselves and we're not doing it to satisfy some other government or system. Well, that's the end of the road for this episode, but make sure you join the next leg from Cairns across to Darwin. You'll start to see a bit of the outback, and believe me, it's a lot different from the coast. I'm off to do a bit of camping in the jungles of Cape Trib, so catch ya.